Hi there, RC Girl here. Today I'm back with part two of my Extra Speed XS01 all metal scale crawler build from RC Mart. In my first video, I did an unboxing so you guys can check out everything that came in the kit and some of the electronics I picked out. In this video, I'm gonna go over some of the build highlights, also some of the mods that I had to do, including dremeling the motor cage so my brushless censored motor would fit inside this. I also had to set up the high speed, low speed shifter and this was my first time doing it. I have a DX5 rugged, so I had to set the servo endpoints. I'll show you guys how I did that. And then we're gonna set up all our electronics. So if you guys wanna see how this build's coming together, make sure you stay tuned. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Here you're gonna find RC reviews, tips and tricks, run videos, flight videos, and other things related to RC. So make sure you guys like and subscribe if you wanna see more. The XS01 kit comes partially assembled, so your axles are already built for you, some of the transmission. You do have to assemble your tires on the beadlock rims, and then you have to assemble everything to the chassis and attach the links. I did mention this in my last video, but this kit comes with zero instructions. So I wouldn't recommend it as your first kit build, but if you're kind of an intermediate or more experienced RC builder, this would be a great kit for you. I only had a few issues of figuring out what screw went where when there was the same number of screws provided for something. But anyhow, I wanted to flag that for you guys. It was a concern of mine, ended up being okay. Okay, let's dive in. This is kind of a crazy mess, but what you wanna do when you're first setting up your electronics is lay out where everything goes in the car so that all your cables are long enough and you know that you're gonna have enough length to be able to organize these later. You wanna make sure that they're gonna reach. First, let's start with servos. This is what I ended up picking out for my steering servo. I have a couple builds going on right now, and so expenses get a little bit crazy when you're picking out some really high-end servos. So I just found this on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description box below, but it's supposed to be a pretty high-torque servo. It can function on 6.8 volts, and actually the ESC that I picked out, you can use Bluetooth with your app, and you can set the BEC voltage, which is kind of cool. So this should be pretty good. It comes with the servo horn, aluminum servo horn. It's a 25 tooth. I can't say how good this is gonna be long-term, but I also have one in my bomber and it's been lasting pretty good so far. So I'll keep you guys posted on how I like this long-term. And then for my shift servo, I ended up using a servo that I had lying around and this one was pulled out of my bomber. This is not gonna be under a lot of steering force or anything. It just basically is used to move this in and out just a tiny, tiny bit. And I'll show you guys later in the video how I set this up. For my motor ESC combo, I ended up going with the censored 1800 KV motor and the Axe Zeron combo. So this thing is pretty cool so far. I still have to solder on my leads and attach the sensor here. 
attaches right here. It comes pre-soldered with an XT60 connector, which is great because that's what I run in all my batteries. And also it has a cool Bluetooth module. So you download the Hobbywing, I think it's called the Link app, and it already has a built-in Bluetooth module. So you can go in the app and there's tons and tons of different setups you can modify, which is really, really cool. So I have to play around with that. I'll show you guys how I set that up later on in the video. And here's the motors. So what I had to do, I'll show you guys a before and after, but basically this sat down, this top piece sat down flush and the motor can was too high. It wouldn't fit in there. You can see there's a little bit of space underneath. I think it's designed for a smaller size motor. And then I also, so I had to raise this piece up and I also had to Dremel out this square here. As I mentioned, I'm using a Spectrum DX5 Rugged and it comes with an SR515 five channel surface receiver. So I'll show you guys how I set that up later on in the video. I'm using a 5000 milliamp 50C Ovonic LiPo. This is a 2S. Also comes with XT60 connectors. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I know it's a crazy, crazy mess. We're gonna organize this for sure. So as you guys can see, I got quite a lot of work ahead of me. We're gonna take this step by step. First, let's start with the motor. We're gonna attach the motor cage back to the transmission and get it all soldered onto the ESC. Let's take it away. Alrighty, I got my motor soldered to the ESC. This is my first one here. I kind of messed it up a little bit. I'm not the best solder but I always get nervous that I'm gonna have too much heat and ruin the motor or the ESE. But that one was pretty good, the second one. My third one was, I would say, like maybe a B minus. But anyhow, I need to definitely improve my solder skills. These ones were already soldered and they look perfect. And then I was able to mount my motor. So this little casing here, I have to attach that, but it comes off and I grease the gears back here. There is your little grub screw and that sits out a little bit so you want to make sure that your gears overlap you set your gear mesh properly and that your gears do not grind on that because that does not sit flush with the bottom of the gear now that we have our motor all set up let's go to our servos shift servo took me a little while to figure out i had to do a mod so let's take it away i'll show you guys what i did this originally had a little spring mechanism that made it so I needed to use pretty much the full throw and it wouldn't engage properly. So I found these little parts lying around. They're kind of like these little eyelets and I attached two together. It allowed enough offset of the servo arm here and alignment where I could use the mounts that came with the kit itself. So you can see that the servo is mounted on the bottom here with these two screws. So here you can see the steering, throttle, and braking, and then the three auxiliary ports. So the shift servo is gonna be set to aux one, and you can see here my throw is plus 37 to zero. That's pretty much all you need to engage the shift mechanism. Sometimes you get a little uh, noise when it's kind of between gears, and once you get the wheels rolling, it engages the right gear and it should straighten out, but yeah. So to set the limits, you're gonna go into the settings and you're gonna go to travel, oops. then scroll down to aux one. And then I click the percentage where I saw it was engaging the shift mechanism, but not overextending the servo arm where you get that mechanical sound. So for me, my settings were 0% and 37%. And then I set it to switch G. I thought this would be really nice because you could just basically use your thumb to shift. 
All right, let's get this thing ready to drive. All I have to do is a little bit of cable management, cleaning things up on the chassis, and then I can walk you guys through some highlights with the Bluetooth programming for the Hobbywing ESC. To be honest, I had a little bit of trouble connecting with the Bluetooth. I had to try a bunch of times before I could actually get it to work, but I did get it to work, and there's a ton of tunability, so that's really cool. Let's get this thing ready to drive. Here's the homepage for the Hobby Wing Link app. If you go to the second page, if you look in the top right corner, there's the ESC icon with the signal bars. That means that you are connected successfully. If you don't see the signal bars, it means you're in demo mode and none of your settings will save. So if you click on parameters, you can save your model. So you can have your model, I have XSO1 Jeep. And then here's all the settings that you can modify in the ESC. I made sure to set my low voltage cutoff to medium. And then I also turned down the reverse force. I don't like a ton of speed when I'm reversing. I did turn down the drag brake a little bit too. These are also settings that I can modify in my Spectrum DX5 rugged, but also you can do those here as well. And then here's some additional settings. You can set the BEC voltage. And I also had to change the motor rotation to clockwise because it was going backwards when it was supposed to be going forwards. And then you can change the icon and change the model name. And then when you click save in the top right corner, it pushes all these settings to the ESC. The moment you guys have been waiting for, let's turn this thing on and bring it to life. Everything super organized, just used a bunch of zip ties and made sure all the cables were out of the way of any moving parts. Turn on my DX5 rugged and yeah, let's power it up. Oops, I don't have the right model selected. I was playing with my bomber last night. XS01 selected. Let's try this again. Two beeps means it's recognizing the two cell battery. And we got power to our servo. Awesome, this is really cool. <laughs> I'm really excited with how this turned out. The electronic setup is sweet. It can go so slow. I had a race against my TRX4 of how slow can you go? And this one is pretty sick. <laughs> Let's check our shift mechanism. This is our slow speed. Okay, don't drive it off your table. That was not planned. Oops, I may or may not have broken the shock tower piece. Take two. Well, that was pretty dumb. I would definitely suggest not doing that on your table. It landed on the floor and I broke the shock tower and the little brace. I'll have to see if I can get a spare for that. In the meantime, I don't even have the body on it yet, so. I have a little bit of time to repair this. So learn from me and take the wheels off your car. When you're messing around with it for the first time, especially if you're doing some programming, it could be pretty dangerous. Um, but we have our shift mechanism working. Looking good. And we got our forward and our reverse. So what are my pros and cons after doing the build? The tire compound seems super soft and grippy. One thing to note, I do like to underinflate my tires, but with this soft compound, there's kind of a bevel here around the bead. I don't know, I'm not a super fan of that visually. Another thing I like is the two-speed transmission option. Some people don't really like that, but I am kind of a fan of it. I like to have a little bit more speed when you're heading out on the trail or coming home, and then to be able to really slow it down when you're crawling over some features. I do also like the scale look of the transmission case. I did have to make a couple mods to it though to fit my motor, but overall I think it looks really cool. This is not a cheap kit, so it is a little bit pricier, but compared to other rigs in this same class of all metal components, it is on the lower end. I think it really depends on how much you want to spend. And then I do want to be completely honest about this build. There are a couple of cons that I wanted to call out. Not having instructions is hard because what if you break apart? Not so much the actual build, but I think identifying part numbers and all that when you need to do repairs down the road would be a lot more helpful with an instructions manual. Then there is a little bit of slop in some of the components. I know some people really, really hate that. Um, but for the transmission engagement, the wheels, there's just a little bit of back and forth before the gear is actually engaged. And I compare that with my Traxxas TRX4, and it does have a little bit, but not as much as this one. And the front bumper is a little bit loose. There's some components that just don't quite fit together as cleanly as I'd like. I did also have to modify the shift mechanism, but that was kind of a fun modification, learning about how that works and how I can make it engage and disengage a little bit more fluidly without the spring. 
Another thing I noticed is that the shocks feel a little bit inexpensive. I have my old Traxxas TRX4 shocks lying around and those are kind of some of the best out there. So I might put those on here, but I didn't want to make a ton of huge changes before taking it outside. I wanted to see how it performed without any major modifications. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a ton of fun doing this build over the course of a couple weeks. Other than just driving it off the table and breaking the shock tower, which was totally my fault, I am really excited about this build. I'll have to do a longer trail video. Stay tuned again for my Jeep Rubicon painting video. I have a hard body and that's the one that's gonna go on this. I got my colors picked out. It's gonna be really, really cool. So stay tuned for that. As always, make sure to like and subscribe or see you later.